Hey everybody. I briefly introduced in class the other day um, what what the historical climate and context was during the time Bronte was writing. And there was a lot happening in science and in academia that called into question traditional religious points of view. And I also noted that you can see this historical shift going on in people's worldview and it's playing out in Jane Eyre and Bronte is aware of it and we can see um, that she explores it to some degree in, in the novel and it's important to know how that plays out. So um, first of all, um, you might wonder based on her experiences with um, Lowood, with the Reeds, Brocklehurst, is Jane Eyre an anti-Christian or is it an irreligious novel? And that, um, you know, she's, we've noted several times this talk of another world or spirits, fairies, etc. By the way, um, there's not a lot of images in this lecture. Um, so, except for my pretty face. Uh, and, um, Oh, that's horrible. I should edit that out, but whatever. I got to keep going. I have literally oh ten more minutes before I have to run to class. So, um, I recommend taking notes as you are watching this. Um, I have provided a handout in the topics um, little bulletin that's in the class page. So along with the video. Um, there's a handout. And so you, you could use that as something to take notes with um, while you're listening to it. So yeah, there is a question, you know, uh, an astute reader would ask, is this a anti or pro Christian novel? Um, so it's true that Christianity is both being questioned and, and maybe brought under siege by certain scientific ideas and discoveries. But Christianity is also evolving and adapting in certain ways, where like the older um, standard um, Christian practices and theological concepts are, are shifting, and we'll talk about that. Um, so um, it's important, though, that there was an anxiety about what what I'll call, quote, the, this phenomenon of the disappearance of God. Um, and this was sort of lingering and maybe haunting the Victorian era um, as people tried to understand what Darwin's discoveries meant when he introduced um, evolutionary biology and, um, and that which totally challenges um, the creation story. Moreover, in Germany, there was very, uh, some very heavy and um, in-depth study of the Bible, and it's referred to as the, the German higher criticism. Higher criticism meaning like critical analysis. What the Germans, some of the early German critical approaches discovered, and this is proven, is that the Old Testament wasn't written by, like the first part of the Old Testament Legend says that Moses wrote it down, that God told him what to write down, he wrote it down. And what these critics discovered was, in fact, if you look carefully at, at certain passages, um, and certain anomalies in the text, um, you can see how there are different authorships at work. And moreover, you can carefully examine these different authorships and, and place them in different time periods within the, the kingdom, uh, different time periods within the reign of, of the Israelite kings, um, namely like King David and King Solomon, where there is a, a period of, of wealth and, 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 and some peace and, and the arts and, and literary forms were emerging and flourishing. And that these versions of telling the stories in the Bible were um, meant to suit the agenda 
of certain kings. So they're sort of using Bible, the Bible stories as, a, as kind of propaganda. Um, that's one way you could look at it. But it still, I don't think, refutes Christianity. It's just a more in-depth understanding that, look, the Bible is not, you know, necessarily something that's handed directly from God to Moses or the prophets. Um, it's it's a collection of a lot of different writings. And if you look at the different authorships within the Old Testament, you're going to see there's different agendas. So that is also very present during this time period. And we know that Jane Eyre or that Bronte was aware of it. And so um, that's sort of in the background when Bronte is writing. Um, so the efficacy of Christianity, that's my abbreviation for Christianity for many people use that abbreviation. Uh, yeah, what, what can we, what's the value? What's the, the truth? Um, what is now the meaning behind Christianity um, in the 1800s? That's something that authors at the time took up, some of them did, to explore that question. We certainly see Bronte doing that. Um, now, as some faith eroded, okay, as maybe the, the idea of um, Darwinian evolution challenged people's beliefs in Christianity, there was also a sort of counter movement in Christianity which focused more on getting at the heart of the teachings of Jesus in the New Testament and um, espousing a faith in which it's not just following Catholic doctrine um, or Anglican old world doctrine, but trying to live a life that is um, attempting to model the virtues of Christ. Um, and this question, can, can somebody actually um, live as close a life of Christ as possible, and in so doing, spread the Christian faith, spread the, the ethical, moral, spiritual teachings of Jesus as they are presented in the New Testament. And the leaders of such movements um, were George Whitefield, Charles Wesley, and um, began in this began in Britain. Br is my abbreviation. Uh, the met, met, if you're Methodist, um, that's the root of me Methodism, um, and these two guys, and this evangelical approach, as in an evangelist is one who goes out and tries to spread the spiritual, ethical, moral teachings of Jesus, and tries to show people how those teachings can be applicable to our daily lives, moment to moment, day to day, interpersonally, in families, in organizations. So um, I will pause for a minute. Again, I'm, well, my face, oh, I guess you can still see the, the text there. And if you've got the handout, you can read it. Um, St. John or, or St. John is somebody who's an ex exemplar of, of this type of evangelical Christianity. Um, also, Charlotte Bronte's father, Patrick Bronte, was um, within this vein of thinking. All right, so Chris, critics, you know, and there are many, many, many critics, um, as in critical analysts, people who study Bronte's writings and Jane Eyre, they're, they're divided as to what they think. Um, was, was Charlotte Bronte rejecting Christianity? Or, and, and, and some say she was. Others say she is introducing a more liberal, a more liberal belief in in a providential God, providential meaning a God that is good and caring rather than a punishing God. Okay, so like the the reeds represent that that sort of old school um, retributional God, similar to what you see in the Old Testament. You break my rules, you break my covenant, you disobey me, and you're going to get punished. And we say see that happening with the reeds and with Brocklehurst and the strict rules. Uh, we've talked a little bit about 
feminism now and um, the patriarchy you co opts certain dogmatic positions in order to use them for their own patriarchal uh, agenda. And we see that happening in Lowood, and he's obsessed with sin and punishment. And where is the doctrine of forgiveness and compassion? And that's left out. And certainly there were, um, that was a problem with, with Christianity at the time, where it becomes so focused on, um, are you living this morally correct life? And the emphasis is on, um, you know, strictness and adherence to rules and punishment and guilt, sin. But on the other side, you know, what happened to this concept of forgiveness and compassion? Helen represents a counterbalance to this Brockelhurstian type of Christianity. She's more along the lines of what Sinjin is trying to do, but I think Sinjin is also an extreme. Um, you know, he wants to deny everything in order to try to live a life that models that of Christ. Okay, Helen um, is a little bit more balanced in my opinion, even though she she doesn't live very long, but she, she focuses on um, forgiveness, compassion, and this idea that there is a loving and compassionate God that's taking care of her. Um, that even there's spirits or angels that are that are watching over us and guarding us. And Helen feels very in tune and connected with those. Okay, you don't get any of that good stuff um, from this more rigid masculine type of uh, approach to Christianity that we see typified by Brocklehurst in the reeds. Helen is a, you know, the, the opposing point of view when, when it comes to that. Um, so emerging is this idea that God is, is good. God is, is, can be a father, a caring figure, um, someone or a, some supernatural entity that is benevolent, good, almost like a friend that you can turn to in times of need. Um, and Jane looks towards a higher entity um, when she tries to, to escape her, her servitude from Lowood and, and, and then winds up in Thornfield. Oh, and there is the bell. I'll, I guess I'll pause now and um, do a second video when I come back.